high dynamic range photography and video have been around for a long time. It's a great way to capture a scene where the darkest dark and the brightest bright are more than the latitude of the camera can handle. In a natural scene like a sunset or a um, you know, anytime we have a very very bright light and very very dark shadows there's going to be 30, 40, 50 stops between the two um, areas. HDR works by taking two separate exposures, one that properly exposes the highs, one that properly exposes the darks, and then using software and post-production to balance those two things together. I had seen some stuff done in photography that I wanted to try and bring into the video field. This method doesn't necessarily involve changing the exposure of your camera, but you wait for the exposure of the scene to change. In this case, a sunset, you might shoot 10 seconds um, as the sun's setting, 10 seconds just after the sun has set, and then you might wait 30 minutes until all the lights have come on and shoot another 10 seconds. Take those three clips into post-production and combine them into a scene that never occurred at once, but is the combination of the experience of watching a sunset. These HDR images are larger than life. They're hyper real. I really love the effect they give of sort of a dreamlike idealistic place that never really occurred, but one that we recognize in our memories. So today we're gonna to look at some of these images, how I shot them, how I combine them in post, and how you can get images like this uh, working with your camera. Now it is super critical with this technique that the positioning of your camera doesn't change from shot to shot. If it does, they won't line up in post-production and you won't have uh, an image to look at. Of course, this creates a problem because you don't necessarily want to hike into uh, the hills or um, into remote locations with a really heavy tripod. So uh, the solution is this guy. Um, this is a Benro HH100AV hi-hat. It's a 100 millimeter ball head mount, um, but the whole thing weighs just a couple of pounds. Um, it has adjustable feet, can actually extend the legs out somewhat, and it gives you a stable light um, shooting platform where you can get the most out of whatever you mount on it. I mean, I mounted three cameras, including the C200 on this, uh, and it was just on a pile of rocks. So it's really, really stable and doesn't take up much room in your backpack uh, when you're hiking out to these remote places to get these shots. We are here in the foothills of Burbank and we're gonna do a little bit of uh, nature um, filmmaking. <laughs> We have the C200, which is going to be our main camera, Canon 5D Mark III. Um, we're going to shoot on the 24 to 70. We have the Benro hi hat and the 100 millimeter ball head monitor, monitor to monitor all this. All this in this bag uh, weighs about 22 pounds, so it's it's not going to be easy, but it's not going to be more than I can handle. Right now, this is my image. I'm on the uh, 24 to 70 at, at 24 mil. Um, I got a nice stretch from the sunset all the way across to the tree. Um, and I'm gonna just make sure my, my camera's bubbled up, I'm level, and I'm gonna roll on this. But what we'll do is we'll get 20 seconds at different exposures at different times from, from now as the sun goes down into um, twilight and then into darkness as the lights come up and we'll take them into um, resolve, grade them, and then composite them to give us one image that never actually existed, that will be sort of similar to you know, the memory of someone who watched this whole thing take place. So um, the next advantage of using such a stable uh, shooting platform as this is that I'm able to um, pen stack cameras on top of it. So I have this ball head that I put my 5D Mark III on. Um, it's just gonna shoot a normal C-log video for the entire sunset, so that's something we can speed up. And then last but not least, I have the GoPro that's gonna do a stills image time-lapse of downtown LA to our, our left. So we're gonna pretty much get a whole panorama of the, um, of the sunset uh, all at once. Now 
we're sort of in golden hour. Um, the sun has just gone over the horizon. There's a beautiful warm glow on everything. In about 10 minutes, we're gonna get into blue hour where there's no real directional light, but everything is illuminated. It's very cool blue tone. After that, we're gonna get into twilight uh, where the sky is almost universally um, dark blue uh, and you're gonna have all the street lights and car lights and um, house lights come on. So what I want to do is combine those different um, moments into one picture. So we're going to stick around for another maybe 30 minutes and then uh, slowly walk down the hill with all that gear. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve. We have three passes that I'm gonna use from the um, three different times. I've done this with up to eight passes, but I'm just gonna keep it simple for the tutorial. First, we have the hill pass, um, which illuminates uh, the foreground here. Then we have the sky pass, which I like for the valleys and the sky. And the third one is this um, nighttime shot with uh, I like the kind of wedge of the sky, but the main thing I'm usually going to use it for are these lights. So we're going to put the hill pass here. We only need about you know, 10 seconds of it. We can get rid of the audio. It's telling me here the bottom number is how long my clip is, so 10 seconds. Then I'm going to put my sky pass on top. If you want to get fancy, you're going to trim that. You could, you know, accelerate the sky so that you see the clouds moving. But I'm just, again, I'm going to keep it simple for this. And then on top of those, I'm going to put the lights of the city. I'm going to hit W, just trim it in. So now I have all three things stacked on top of one another um, in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to take the, the top pass first, which is my lights, and I'm going to set that to lighten and right away you see I've got now the the sort of the lights are going over the existing thing the next thing I'm going to do is go down to my crop and push up this top crop and you see it's starting to bring back my golden sky so I'm going to have it just over the horizon and then I'm going to push up the softness to about 25 and bring my crop back down again. So all we get, we still get the mist of the valleys. We get our, we get our nice sky. So all this is doing is just bringing in some light to the horizon over here and filling in all our great valley lights. Next one is a little trickier because if I click this, I want to get detail back into this foreground here. And if it was, um, if it was just a simple straight line, what I could do is just slide up the bottom here, increase my softness, and then I have this and the valley. But because this is an angle, I need to get a little a little trickier. Whoops. I'm gonna go over to my color grading tab and turn on my timeline so that I can see which of these ones I'm grading. I'm gonna to go to the middle one I'm going to go to the polygon um, masking window and I'm going to hit the polygon. Then place it in this bottom corner, drag an, one extra node, two extra nodes, get my final node all the way down here. You can see here I just have one um, sort of thing and I can go over to my Still in my window, I can bring both the inside and the out outside softnesses up to about two. So we see here. Now I need to kind of get tricky. I need to click, right click in this space and say add alpha output. Then drag the alpha of this to this guy. And you actually see I get the reverse of what I want. So if I can go over here to my node key and in the key output, reverse it. So now I'm getting what I want. I, I've clipped out, I'm just gonna adjust this so that it runs along that ridge line. 
leaves the foreground in there. So I can go back to my um, editing tab, tab now and I can see something close to what I want with my foreground, midground, and background all illuminated differently. I think the problem here, or the, re the reason I'm not 100% happy, is the foreground is a little bit, the midground is a little bit too saturated. I think that's the top one. Yep. And then the um, this is a little bit too bright. It's too much of a difference between here and here. It looks fake. I mean, it's going to look a little bit fake, but we don't want it to look too fake. So I'm going to select my bottom, my foreground guy, and then just in my um, in my color things here, I'm going to bring down the midtones a little bit. Yep, bring down my blacks. You can bring down these guys. So I've still got detail here that I didn't have before, but now it's not quite so big. And I'm going to bring in the saturation as well, so to about 40. Now the saturation in this guy, this top guy, was a problem too. So let's bring down the saturation of that. And you can see my valley starts to look a little more natural. Then back to my edit. Turn off the inspector. And now I have an image that I'm much happier with. I have my top pass, which is my lights, my middle pass, which is my valley and my sky, and then my foreground pass um, of the of the shrubs and the tree. So all together they make a really cool image. That's my uh, high dynamic range combined exposure technique. Um, please leave your questions in the comments. I would love to help anyone else out and uh, I would love to see other people using this and see what um, you guys come up with. I use DaVinci Resolve because it's free. Uh, you can also do this with Premiere. You can do much more sophisticated versions in things like After Effects or even in the Fusion program that's uh, built within the new Resolve 15. But um, starting out, I would say just get three exposures. Get the foreground, get the sky, and then wait and get the lights and add the lights as a luminance or an overlay layer uh, on top of the other two. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks to Ben Rowe for the hi-hat and sponsoring this episode. Uh, leave your questions in the comments and I will see you next time.